Good evening, you are watching the news from the Sultanate of Oman Television. First, the headlines. His Majesty Sultan Qaboos gives an audience to His Excellency the President of the State of Palestine, Chairman of the Executive Committee of the Palestinian Liberation Organization. His Excellency the Secretary of Fatah Central Committee praises the Sultanate stand towards supporting the Palestinian cause. The foundation stone for an integrated residential project in the Wilaya of Barqa is laid. And the second regional conference on the health of the youth starts in the Governorate of Muscat. Those were the headlines now for the news in detail. His Majesty Sultan Qaboos gave an audience at Beit al baraka to His Excellency President Mahmoud Abbas, President of the State of Palestine, Chairman of the Executive Committee of the Palestinian Liberation Organization, who arrived in the Sultanate yesterday. During the meeting, they discussed various aspects of cooperation between the two countries, a means of supporting and strengthening the good relations between them in order to achieve the common interests of the Omani and Palestinian peoples. The meeting was attended by His Excellency Sayyid Khalid bin Hilal al Saidi, Minister of the Diwan of Royal Court, His Excellency General Sultan bin Muhammad al numani Minister of the Royal Office, His Excellency Yusuf bin Alawi bin Abdullah, Minister Responsible for Foreign Affairs, and His Excellency Darwish bin Ismail Lablushi, Minister Responsible for Financial Affairs. From the guest side, it was attended by His Excellency Jibril Rajoub, Central Committee Secretary, His Excellency Hussein al-Sheikh, Chairman of General Authority for Civil Affairs, Major General Majid Faraj, Head of the General Intelligence Service, and His Excellency Dr. Taysir Ali Dawood Farhat, Ambassador of Palestine to the Sultanate. His Majesty Sultan Qaboos received a cable of thanks from President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi of Egypt in reply to a cable of greetings sent by His Majesty <coughs> excuse me, to the Sultan on the occasion of 6 October anniversary. His Excellency Jibril Rajoub, Secretary of Fatah Central Committee, praised the wisdom of His Majesty the Sultan and the Sultanate stand towards supporting the Palestinian cause. He also stressed that the visit of His Excellency Mahmoud Abbas, President of Palestine, is considered an expansion of the historical relations between both countries. He added that the discussion during the visit focused on exchanging points of views on the latest developments in the Palestinian cause. The Sultanate's support towards the Palestinian cause and achieving peace in addition to the establishment of the State of Palestine with East Jerusalem as its capital echoed throughout the West Bank and Gaza Strip. When Washington recognized Jerusalem as the capital of Israel, His Excellency Yusuf bin Alawi bin Abdullah, minister responsible for foreign affairs, paid a visit to Jerusalem and met the Palestinians while encouraging the Arabs to visit the area and get acquainted with the current situation of the people there closely. The visit reflected the Omani stand towards the Palestinian cause and the humanitarian care by the Sultanate in aiding the people of Palestine. The Sultanate also played a role in enhancing the cultural aspect of Palestine so as to preserve its heritage and identity.
A ceremony was held to mark the laying of the foundation stone for an integrated residential project in the wilaya of Barka. More details in the following report, read by Sheikha al Mahruqiya. A ceremony was held in the Governorate of South Batina for laying the foundation stone of the integrated residential project in the wilaya of Barka. The project is implemented by the Ministry of Housing in cooperation with the Supreme Council for Planning. It comes to support the existing housing policies in the Sultanate, which aim to find alternatives to provide housing for citizens. The units will be available for citizens who are eligible to receive government land plots subject to meeting certain terms that regularize the ownership of the housing units at this project. The project will reduce the waiting list for receiving land plots in a transparent manner as shifting to this new model will provide affordable and convenient housing at a high-quality urban and modern community. The project will be built in an area of 350,000 square meters and will include 1,000 housing units. The construction of this project comes within the Oman Vision 2040. The ceremony was held under the auspices of His Excellency Sheikh Saif bin Mohammed al-Shabibi, Minister of Housing. State Council Office held a meeting today which discussed a proposal on developing the regulation of the private training institutions in the Sultanate. The meeting also dwelt on a number of topics like protecting children from accidents, reviewing legislations related to the safety and security of children, further promote the utilization of manpower in the public sector, establish endowment, waqf to support education, researches and innovation, in addition to issuing a law to regulate the usage of biotechnology in the Sultanate and its products, as well as protecting genetic data in the Sultanate. The meeting was chaired by His Excellency Dr. Yahya bin Mahfouz al-Mandri, Chairman of the State Council. The second regional conference on the health of youngsters started in the Governorate of Muscat. It witnessed participation from various international and regional bodies. It aims to shed light on various issues related to the elements that affect the lives, health and productivity of youngsters. The youth category are around 28.3% of the Sultanate's population and among 100 million youngsters living in the Middle East and North Africa. The conference also focused on mental health, non-chronic diseases and investments in various sectors involving the youth. The opening ceremony was presided over by His Highness Sayyid Kamil bin Fahad bin Mahmoud Al Said. Still to come in our news bulletin. The world's longest sea crossing bridge in Hong Kong is to be officially opened tomorrow. Welcome back to the news from the Sultanate of Oman Television. With participation of more than 250 international specialists and experts, Oman Tel organized Information Technology and Communication Forum in Muscat. The forum stressed that the Sultanate completed a number of important steps in the field of blockchain and artificial intelligence in the current year, and the Sultanate as well preparing to shift to the fifth generation technology. The forum comes as part of the Sultanate's efforts in re realizing the objectives of the E.Oman strategy to transfer the Sultanate into a knowledge-based society and bridging digital literacy. His Excellency Dr. Ahmed bin Mohammed al Futaisi, Minister of Transport and Communications, pres presided over the forum. The Directorate General of the Judicial Inspection directed to double the efforts and facilitate the procedures in the Sultanate's courts. During the annual meeting of members of Judicial Inspection Authority, the Directorate stressed the necessity 
to speed up the procedures to achieve the integrated development goals of the current work. His Excellency Sheikh Dr. Ishaq bin Ahmed Al Busaidi, Chairman of the Supreme Court, Chairman of the Judiciary Administrative Affairs Council, chaired the meeting. Exchanging viewpoints in academic and training fields, top discussions of Major General Salim bin Musallam Qutan, Commander of National Defense College, with the military delegation from the College of Defense Management at the Indian city of Sikundraba who is on a current visit to the Sultanate. During the visit, the delegation watched a visual presentation about the National Defense College and the facilities and equipment it includes. The Board of Directors of Capital Market Authority agreed on the project of e-linking system for health insurance in the Sultanate and approved its budget. This comes within the efforts exerted to prepare mechanisms of applying the compulsory health insurance on those working in the private sector, along with expatriates residing in the Sultanate, including visitors. During its third meeting of the year, the board also approved the work procedures for the Committee of the Management of Insurance Fund to help those suffering from physical injuries caused during accidents and legacies. The 7th Regional Cybersecurity Summit in Kuwait shed light on the latest technologies and systems in this field. It was organized by the Regional Arab Center affiliated to the International Telecommunication Union with a global participation. It was considered an opportunity to exchange knowledge and expertise in cybersecurity field as well as to get acquainted with the studies and researches regarding electronic crimes in addition to strategic plans to keep up with the latest developments in this field. Now for some international news, Turkey's state-run news agency said Coast Guards have rescued some 20, 20 people after a boat carrying migrants sank off Turkey's Aegean Sea coast. Two of the migrants later died in the hospital. IHA footage showed one unconscious young girl being rescued by emergency services. The boat, which was believed to be carrying around 30 people, sank early today near the, the resort of Gambit near Bodrum. The area is so close to the Greek island of Kos. Residents in Gambit alerted authorities after hearing cries for help and some took part in the rescue operation. Rescue crews were searching the area for more survivors. Although their numbers have decreased in recent years, migrants still try to cross the into Greece from nearby Turkey in the hopes of making their way to other European countries. Southeast Asian navies began their first joint exercises with China today, with over 1,000 personnel taking part in the drills. Chinese naval fleets departed for drills from the southern port city of Zhangjiang, Guangdong province. The defense ministers of the 10-member Association of Southeast Asian Nations, ASEAN, last, last week said in a joint declaration that the exercises would enhance friendship and confidence between ASEAN member states and the People's Liberation Army Navy and the U.S. Navy. Each country is sending eight fleets to participate in the exercise, which will include operations like maritime safety, medical evacuation, and search and rescue procedures, involving a total of 1,200 soldiers. The week-long drills came amid lingering tensions in the South China Sea, which Beijing claims almost in its entirety, but is challenged by several Southeast Asian nations as well as Washington. The world's longest cross sea bridge, the Hong Kong Zhuhuai Macau Bridge in Zhuhuai City, that connects the east and the west sides of the Pearl River Delta in South China, will officially open tomorrow. The 55 kilometer bridge that will be opened for traffic on Wednesday slashes through the Pearl River estuary lessening the travel time between Hong Kong and Zhuhuai from 4 hours to 45 minutes. The main section of the project is a 22.9 km bridge and a 6.7 km underwater tunnel. The bridge is part of Beijing's Greater Bay Area Scheme 
aiming to provide better passenger and freight land transport between Hong Kong and mainland China, integrating the Guangdong province into a better business hub. Consultancy studies estimate that 29,000 vehicles and 126,000 passengers will cross the bridge daily by 2030. Now for the general weather forecast around the Sultanate, clear skies will prevail over most of the governorates with chances of low clouds and fog late at night and early morning. Over the coasts of the Arabian Sea, winds will be southeasterly to south light to moderate. Seas will be slight with a maximum wave height of 1.25 meters. This is the Sultanate of Oman Television. Before we end tonight's bulletin, here are the main points once again. His Majesty Sultan Qaboos gives an audience to His Excellency the President of the State of Palestine, Chairman of the Executive Committee of the Palestinian Liberation Organization. His Excellency, the Secretary of Fatah Central Committee, praises the Sultanate's stand towards supporting the Palestinian cause. The foundation stone for an integrated residential project in the Wilaya of Barqa is laid. And the second regional conference on the health of the youth starts in the Governorate of Masfat. With that, we, with that, we come to the end of tonight's news bulletin from all of us here at the newsroom and the studios. It's good night.